Hello, hello, and welcome to another Hometown Daily News Show. I am Mayor Watt, and today is February 16th, 2023. Tonight's episode is titled, One Small Step for Dinosaur Kind. We've already selected 10 articles. Actually, we've selected 10 and then turned it up one, so 11. And uh, we're going to be covering a Tesla recall of th over 360,000 vehicles. Uh, what might be characterized as three UFOs because no information exists. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, training a dragon live action. I probably won't have anything to say about that. Uh, Australian vegan milk recall. A beachgoer stumbles across a three foot long dinosaur footprint left over 160 million years ago. The PlayStation VR 2. Yeah, I've watched a couple of videos and read a few things, so that could be interesting to you if you're into VR. It's far harder to cancel a subscription than it is to sign up. Uh, Norfolk Southern has been uh, sued over the Ohio derailment. A, another uh, train has derailed in uh, Michigan. Uh, Biden dismisses reporters for not being polite, but Actually, it was something to do with UFO questions. And um, absolutely not. There's a little segment call that, called Absolutely Not and says uh, Pepsi brings back marshmallow cola collaboration with Peeps. Let's get into the news. Hello, 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 hello. I am Mayor Watt. That is hometown.com. And uh, with me, as always, is the AI from on high. The one, the only, oh, well, we just refer to the AI as AI. You want to say hi, AI? Good evening, hometown citizens, and happy Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday. Wow, that's right. It is Thursday, the... Am I losing track? It is Thursday, the 16th, 2023. We're chugging right along. Um, it says that I'm unstable, so I'm not sure if it's a stab at me or uh, something else, but our signal to out of hometown into uh, Twitch says that it, it's unstable. So if things are glitchy and you're visiting into chat, um, let me know. I haven't heard any complaints yet, but we'll see. <clears throat> We've got additional big changes going on over at hometown as a little bit of a side note here. Um, yes, I've been slacking in uh, submitting the podcast. I'm actually, I just submitted all three of the past days. That's how far back I was, but I have to update show notes. <clears throat> if you are visiting here because of the podcast, uh, you can actually get show notes over at uh, YouTube as well, but I'll be updating it um, as soon as humanly possible, uh, probably tomorrow. Um, that said, we've already selected 11 articles. You want to get right into this? Sounds great. Um, oh, yeah, and some more things are afoot at hometown. I hinted at it, but now we have the labels for the articles. Pardon me one second. I don't know what's going on here in hometown might be a virus. <clears throat> I mean, it did say you were unstable, so maybe we have a hint. <laughs> it's a multi-factor, uh, un instability. Um, so now we have little thumbnails that are in the hometown, um, news feeds. Um, all of the categories have those as well. Um, additional stuff is going to be launching, um, over the weekend and next week. Uh, so keep an eye out, become a citizen, just mash that sign up button and, and join and become a citizen real quick. It's nice and easy, frictionless. Um, the only friction you'll run across in the near future is two-factor authentication being activated. Um, but the mechanism for this will walk you through it. So no real friction, but let's get into the news. I'll stop rambling. Yeah, the, this gets referred to as preamble in the show notes, but it really should be pro ramble okay the the first article is over in the mobile channel uh tesla recalling 362,000 vehicles due to risk uh, of a crash caused by self-driving software 
Um, yeah, I, I like how they always summarize the title with like a whole number. And then they, as you read further on down, you find out that it's like ever increasing. It seems, um, it's actually 362,758 vehicles that's covering from 2016 to 2023 of pretty much everything. So you might as well just go and check to see if your uh, Tesla <clears throat> with self-driving capabilities is somewhere in that uh, number. It's over at thehill.com. And before I get too far into it, I'm just going to throw that uh, URL into the chat so that you can follow it there. Um, and it's part of the VOD, at least for the next 60 days. Um, it's over at thehill.com. That's what this article is um uh, posted on uh, by Mark Sternfield and has really nice graphic there of a Tesla uh, Model Y, as in, why are you getting a Tesla nowadays? Um, prob probably not that, that's probably not what their marketing is. But anyway, uh, the recall yes, we impacts. Lost another sponsor. Uh, we lost oh, another we sponsor. Lost yeah, we, I think <laughs> yeah. we lost them a long time ago. He, he fired some more people um, recently. So the recall impacts certain 2016, 2020, 2016 to 2023 Model S and X, um, 2017 to 2023 Model 3s, 2020 to 2023 Model Ys um, with a full self-driving uh, beta software. I guess if it's, you know, I think if a, something referred to as full self-driving is in beta, liability is pretty damn high i'd say i don't think anything should be in beta if it is full self-driving but maybe that's i don't even me. think it should be in beta if it's partial self-driving like there's yeah. a lot at stake for self-driving <laughs> true i mean full self-driving i think encompasses self-driving but um my gosh yeah maybe maybe just not I guess there's some um, uh, mitigation of liability if you strap beta to it and somebody takes on the responsibility of enabling full self-driving and then takes a nap uh, and causes an accident. Not much Don't more to you say. Bet that they have a disclaimer of liability that says something like activating full self-driving may result in death or something horrendous. I don't know. <laughs> right. It's probably the same uh, firm that wrote the um, child labor at Hyundai and uh, in various states that are trying to allow for child labor. Um, here, sign here and uh, you won't be able to sue us for the death of your kid. Um, and also just as a side effect, if your self-driving Tesla crashes, uh, you can't sue Tesla either. I think that's how it is in the fine print for, it's this one template that's uh, available from Nolo press and it's just built in there and you can't remove it. It's part of the template. You can't remove it that like Hyundai and these five states and Tesla all have this one thing. If you sign here, you can't sue us for self-driving crashes or meat packer incidents or uh, coal mine incidents um, or so metal. I don't know what the form is. Like, is it like the high risk activity disclaimer of liability or something? Like, is that how you get to that? Clause? Oh, no. It, it's probably something much more uh, innocent, like... Um, a Saturday morning cartoons form and you sign here, but it has this massive disclaimer element. Uh, uh, unfortunately, anybody that had, well, I guess if you had to have enough money, you can basically scoff at the legal system, but anybody who look, who looks at the law and knows about strict liability and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, if you, if you create the environment for which harm is done, you're the one liable for it. So good luck walking away from any injuries. Okay. So enough soapboxing about, I, I try and walk away from Tesla related um, news, unless it's something really, um, 
really substantive, you know, um, and in this particular case, it's a PSA. 362,000 Teslas are being recalled because of this uh, self-driving issue. So uh, the next article is over on the Mobile Channel. Uh, three UFOs shot down by U.S. weren't Chinese spy balloons, according to um, a press release and public discussion uh, a news um, gathering today. Uh, I find this really interesting, though, because apparently um, someone questioned the president as to, like, why we don't have any information and are these UFOs? And he shut the whole thing down and said, you can contact my office uh, when we have more polite people. That isn't in this article, I don't think. Um, but. Uh, Joe Biden finally delivered an update on the three unidentified aerial objects shot down by fighters in the U.S. and Canada, saying none of them were Chinese spy balloons. How about that? Okay, were they UFOs? Okay, but wait, that doesn't mean they're not spy balloons, and it doesn't mean they're not Chinese. It just means they're not Chinese spy balloons. Okay, this is why the AI is uh, in control of hometown uh, ever more, uh, because I would not have looked past that. You know, I would have just looked at it and taken it at face value. Okay, it's not just, maybe it's because I want to see a UFO, um, but I don't know. So they weren't Chinese spy balloons, but they might have been Chinese something other craft, right? I actually you, read the headline the same way you did, but when I read it a second time, I thought about that. Yeah, so according to the president, the U.S. intelligence community believes none of the three newest objects originated from any Chinese spy programs. You, When you equivocate like that, okay, are you, are, the, are you serious? Chinese spy programs, okay? So you can't say that they originated from Chinese spy programs, but are they sp state-sponsored uh, surveillance programs? state sponsored monitoring okay so we know that they didn't come from a spy program but is there something else afoot that is involved with this i don't know what's really going on um so what's interesting is i recently read another report i don't think it's in hometown um but the one of the objects in particular the one over lake huron was octagonal in shape yeah okay well um, that's weird first of all nothing in nature i don't think is octagonal <laughs> um not that we thought it was a natural item but uh and most vehicles and other things are not necessarily octagonal so it says, however, uh, President Joe Biden did not say what the three objects were, saying the military is still searching for the debris. Uh, ben uh, Makuch is the author of this. And it says, uh, I gave the order. Uh, well, Biden said that he gave the order to take down these three objects. They acted in consultation with the Canadian government. They acted out of an abundance of caution. Um, oh, and this is the same interaction wherein when somebody asked, you know, if it was UFOs, he shut the whole thing down. Um, Cause I remember that, that phrase was uttered during that meeting. Um, so it says uh, Biden also unveiled new initiatives for tracking for tracking um, unidentified objects over American airspace. That includes improved international cooperation across the world. Uh, the clarification comes on the heels of a geopolitically charged controversy surrounding a Chinese spy balloon that floated into the U.S. and Can uh, Canadian airspace, which two F-22 fighters eventually took out over the took out. Yeah. Hey, would you like to go get dinner and a flick? Took out. Yeah, they destroyed Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a lot more innocuous than it yeah. was. Come on. I'm a really nice person. Uh, over the Atlantic Ocean near the uh, South Carolina coast. And then it says the three aerial objects that were also engaged in fighter by fighters about a week ago off Alaskan waters, another over the Yukon in Canada and another over Lake Huron led some critics to speculate on whether or not they were amateur weather balloons or UFOs. Uh, they said now it's called balloon gate, but okay, whatever. 
I'm curious. Do we curious. know how um, fast hmm. these things were traveling? Because it's kind of odd that they were all at the same rough period of time. I heard one, at least one senator um, say that you know, these wouldn't be UFOs flying interstellar distances just to fly over a lake at five miles per hour. Um, and I chuckled at that because, yeah, that's pretty damn funny. Um, but really, what are they? And But I have no real issue with the idea that they're not going to tell anybody anything because then it confirms exactly what we have in terms of, you know, if, well, we know that it is a this by this construction with this material. And, and we found some circuit boards in there and uh, little green men and some special material that's anti-gravitic. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I said too much. Um, never mind. Uh, it's a balloon from China, but not a spy balloon. <laughs> yeah, that's just not how it's going to play out. They're going to provide some, I don't know, bulk answer that nobody's going to be able to really discern any real actionable information from but suffice it to say that there's real videos out there of real things happening around battle groups off the coasts of the of the country and in some instances around the terrestrial united states i mean on the ground in the skies it, weird things are going on what they are nobody that's why they're called unidentified um i think it's weird that there are a whole lot of people on the internet that are like no this isn't aliens um and and that it was faked the these things objects flying around the battle groups that the government itself disclosed they don't know what they are um has still ha out there having people go well it, uh it, it's faked the the government is saying that it's faked no <laughs> um but they also have disclosed that the reason why they're seeing more of these things um, is that the fidelity of the radar system has been amped up. So they're seeing a smaller cross section at a time and there are more of the radar stations activated. And so therefore we see more things. So this little ramp up of our observation stance kind of reinforces the idea that that four star general said a couple of months back, you know, hey, we're going to be at war. Um, maybe it's so that we can actually see what's going on in the skies around us because we were a little bit more, um, embracing of things flying over us. So I don't know. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to keep watching the skies and seeing what people see. But now there's going to be thousands of more people in every state looking up at the skies a whole lot more. Maybe we'll see. I was going to say, if any of our own town citizens happen to see any of these objects and want to comment about it, uh, please do. <laughs> That'd be great. Hey, I can put you on camera right there. Boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, so there's a little space right above my uh, interface here. I can put your picture right there, too. Even put a neat border around it. No? The next article is in the uh, continuity report, how to train your dragon live action adaptation coming to theaters in 2025. So when was the last, how to train your dragon? Um, maybe about a year or two. It's probably been longer than that. Yeah, Hold it's on. been 2019, right? I'm going to go straight over to variety just okay. so that we can. Original was 2010. Okay. And right. I'm trying to find out when the other ones were. And then How to Train Your Dragon 2 in 2014. And then How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World in 2019. So that's yeah, in this okay. article. Um, Variety.com is where it's housed. And Rebecca Rubin is the author. So it's been three years. And um, a whole pandemic away. And now a live action, how to train your dragon soaring to theaters in 2025. 
I figured this was kind of played out, but I guess you can keep on doing world building if you're a creative enough writer. Um, it, it's kind of the, um, um, what is it? The toy, uh, what's the movie with the toys that come alive? I'll call it. Toy Story? Toy Story, toy thank story. you. Yeah, it's the toy story of dragons, really. They're just going to keep on, okay, um, until well, it I mean, peters out. Your dragon is really a great series, but with the length of time, like the original batch of people that were watching it have aged out of it. Yeah, I just mean, like Toy Story, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so in the next, <clears throat> in this live action, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, maybe. Uh, what's his name? The the guy that what's his name? Gorp or Goop or who's the 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 guy that finds the dragons? Hiccup. Uh, Hiccup that's right. So Hiccup is going to be going to college because <laughs> this is the one that makes him be eighteen to twenty twenty two something like that. So anyway, the Oscar nominated How to Train Your Dragon takes place in the mythical Viking village of Burke and um, follows the adventures of a misfit teen named Hiccup who befriends an injured dragon and uh, calls them toothless. And over the 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 series of movies, uh, both grow up and become more independent and capable and eventually, um, well, you'll have to watch them. I, I don't want to really spoil it, but... Anyway, um, it's going to, is this really true? This can't be true. So Mark Platt, a best-selling nominee for La La Land, Bridge of Spies, and Trial of the Chicago 7, will also produce the film for his universal-based company, Mark Platt Productions, humble, um, alongside Adam Siegel, president of Mark Platt Productions. <clears throat> And Platt is currently in production on Universal Films' adaptation of Wicked, directed by John M. Chu and starring Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. Okay. Um, who else is going to be in this? Does it say? No, not really. Yeah. No, it looks like it's just more on the production side than on the acting side. Yeah. So, 2025... How to Train Your Dragon. Let's move on to the next article. Um, this article is over in the Hatch Ideas channel. Uh, it's more like another PSA, really, but um, it has become kind of <laughs> a U.S.-based centric show, um, but I always include stuff that's international um, where appropriate and where I can and where it might be interesting, kind of like that, you know, a radioactive pellet rolling out of a car because it takes a left-hand turn. Um, this is in Australia, vegan milk recalled in uh, New South Wales over botulism case. Our regulators have recalled the inside out unsweetened almond milk in New South Wales. I feel like it's the same that this sounds just so much like the same company that produces almond milk here, like eighth continent kind of thing. Um, I wonder if it's the same company just with a different <clears throat> uh, jacket on, you know? So this is over at bbc.com. Uh, Annabelle Lang is the um, author of this article. And it says food safety officials uh, say the recall of inside out unsweetened almond milk in New South Wales is due to potential biotoxin contamination. I know people that would call almond milk biotoxin in and of itself um, because they'll drink nothing but real milk. Um, the toxin that in, uh, causes botulism can be extremely dangerous and has been linked to life-threatening illness. So I would say out of, an, out of an abundance of care, they've recalled this. Um, as soon as they were informed of the potential contamination issue, they commenced voluntary recall and have been providing every assistance uh, to the relevant authorities. Um, um, I think that it it's a good thing. It doesn't look like it's connected to Eighth Continent, I don't believe. Right. Well, no, I didn't really mean to imply directly Eighth Continent, but um, it, it looks the same as other manufacturers here in the States. Um, these little... These same bottles, the same style, but it says uh, 
either JS Health or I'm not sure what that actual name is. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, inside Out, it just says Inside Out, Nutritious, Goods, um, PTY Limited. So what is PTY? I don't remember what that means. Um, is recalling Inside Out Unsweetened Almond Milk, Collagen Plus Calcium Plus Prebiotics. Well, I, I suppose one of those prebiotics is botulin botulinum toxin. Um, oh, so PTY means a proprietary company, and hmm. it's in Australia, Namibia, and South Africa. That's either limited or unlimited. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure why it's only in those three countries, but that's fascinating. It has to be. I, I thought I'd seen that elsewhere, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Um, that doesn't really matter in terms of um, the the story, right? Um, I guess if you uh, inject the the um, almond milk into your uh, forehead and cheeks, you won't get any wrinkles, right? Because that's Botox is the botulinum toxin. That's right, but we wouldn't recommend that people do that at home. Oh, I'm I'm so glad that you have oversight of my filter, uh, because true, uh, if anybody were to take that seriously, I would have uh, real worries. <clears throat> so no, don't don't. We'll need those uh, disclaimers of liability. <laughs> just all over the place. Totally yeah. Don't just don't don't. If. If Marwat says anything about injecting anything, just don't. To, yeah. Um, okay, let's let's just move on to the next article. I, I, I think it's safer if we just move on. This next article is in the Daily News show. Beachgoer stumbles upon record-breaking three-foot-long dinosaur footprint left over 160 million years ago. One small step for dinosaur kind, right? The fossilized print discovered in April 2021 is shown in the picture that we're about to show you. Scientists think the meat-eating dinosaur was relaxing in a crouching position when the imprint was made. And the dinosaur's footprint left 166 million years ago. Why do they do that? The big number up here <laughs> rounded to yes. the whole... And then down in the article, again, a little bit more fidelity. And then I expect the next time I see it, it's going to be 166.2 million years. And yeah. then in a footnote, it's going to say 166.231. Anyway, a record-breaking dinosaur footprint that was left one, some 166 million years ago by a meat-eating megalosaurus uh, has been found on the British coast. And... Um, I, too, am a meat-eating megalosaurus, although I'm trying to give it up. Um, Marianne Guineau. The megalosaurus I, part. <laughs> uh, meat-eating. Uh, no, I still hold my arms really close to me and uh, when I walk around. and You know why the Tyrannosaurus was always angry? Probably because it couldn't reach anything. With That's right. Arms. He had an itch and he could uh, anyway, I'm here all week, folks. I'm here all week, all year for the last two years, actually. Um, so yeah, here's a picture of it. It's obviously a fossilized uh, print that, um, again, interestingly enough, uh, it was discovered by an archaeologist. So if anybody's going to find a fossilized footprint it's going to be an archaeologist because would you walk by that rock and sit there and go oh that looks like a tyrannosaurus rex print i mean if you were far enough away maybe but if you're close up it's not going to look anything other than some rock and i'll be honest it says uh, uh th that uh, megalosaurs are three toed um like bipedal upright things like the Tyrannosaurus, but I swear it looks like it has five fingers. So if you're looking at it, it has the three that are really obvious, but the fourth one, it looks like is deeper into the soil. And then the fifth one looks like a thumb over on its side. So it looks like that on the, obviously you don't see what I'm looking at 
um, like it, it's the other way around, right? Uh, see, I, I I can't do it. I, I'm I'm trying to describe it, but it's not matching up. But at any rate, um, well, it looks like how you would curve your hand around, and it does look like there are five. Yeah, this right here is the thumb. This right here is another finger where it's like cutting in deeper so that you don't really see it. Obviously, it, it's the inverse because this is the print down, right? We're looking at the bottom of it up. Um, and then there's one, there's one, and there's one. So it looks like five to me. So aliens confirmed. Um, so a lo local archaeologist, uh, Mary Wood, discovered the print while collecting shellfish on the shore. Later in the article, they actually say that they've discovered others while they've been beachcombing with their friends. Um, quite fascinating that this person is finding that there's it's so there's so much on the surface that they're just finding this stuff. Um, and so they say it's a, the footprint was likely left by a theropod, a class of two-legged dinosaur with three toes that include the Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, they also refer to it as a Megalosaurus. Um, not much else to say other than it says that the size of the footprint suggests the dinosaur was probably a Megalosaurus between eight and nine feet high at the hip. At the hip. Why not the full height of the thing? How, what are we supposed to, as innocent bystanders, realize? Oh well, at the hip, it must be way taller. I obviously. know. I'm trying to figure out what that means for the total height. Right, because that right there is the hip, right? So, do they measure it to the hip because wow. it's always like this? Oh uh, yeah, I see what you mean. That's Maybe, the highest but point. But what if it's standing up instead of crouched over? Yeah. Weird. Weird. So I guess, wait, this must be the highest point, but then it's like from stem to stern kind of a thing. They measure from the tip of its nose to the tip of its tail for length, but height is just up to the hip. All right. I probably shouldn't dig too deep into this. <laughs> Nothing's written in stone. Uh, these are old archaeology jokes. Just want to let you know. All right. Uh, this fossil is going to move on. Okay. So the next article is over on the Mobile Channel. PlayStation VR 2 is delightful, expensive, and needs more video games. Uh, I agree. Uh to all of these points only based on the the data points because I don't have a PlayStation VR 2 rig but everything that I've read everything that I've seen um, and people who have used the PlayStation VR 2 um, say that it's an awesome piece of equipment that uh, it's rather expensive uh, but I agree with others in the sense that what really needs to take place is some amazing VR titles um, my only problem is that I really hate exclusive titles bound on a particular platform like the Meta or the PlayStation or just PC. I think that people, if you want more people in VR, you know what you do. You make it approachable to everybody. So let's go over to uh, Vice where this article is. And... Um, that's the PlayStation VR 2. It looks like a beast of a helmet. I mean, this thing could probably protect you from a bike crash. Um, and it's tethered, so it's a no-go for me. Um, Patrick Klepek is the author of this. It says, Sony, Sony's produced the slickest virtual reality headset yet, but outside of the standout Horizon, it's full of old games. And they're talking about our... Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn game. Um, it has another, the full title of it is something else. Um, we'll get to it here in a minute. But anyway, um, it says virtual reality uh, gestured at a path of becoming physically and emotionally closer to worlds. 
At their best, virtual reality games are more than just an opportunity to look around at the sky while you play an otherwise normal video game, but are transformational and transportive. Yes. Um, I ended up talking to somebody about the fact that um, many, many years ago, I did research into using VR to treat phobias and pain management and even uh, an attempt at um, accelerated learning in VR environments. Um, and um, it's rather amazing technology if it is utilized both for professional and for entertainment purposes. Um, what's lacking in a lot of VR spaces is that it's just not that transformative. It isn't that transportive. You end up in a relatively low resolution environments because the technology um, to keep you wireless isn't uh, capable of driving high resolution, but with wired connections, you can drive just a, an unbelievable amount of technology. Um, because you don't have to worry about the battery and the data, uh, production, the video production is done on a computer and driven through a cable. So you can just push a bunch of information and it doesn't drain the battery. Well, this is the game, um, horizon call of the mountain, whereas zero dawn is in the same world. Um, but a different person, I believe this one, you actually have to climb up a mountain in VR. Apparently it's only PSVR two initially, but then it'll be pushed out uh, in time. If I recall correctly, this thing has amazing graphics, um, but it's the only one that I have seen to hit that level of resolution, that quality of, um, I, I guess, uh, production. Uh, I think that it's amazing, but is it going to be out on the PS, uh, or sorry, not the PlayStation, but is it ever going to come out for, um, the PC where a large number of people are consuming VR? So there are other people who are reviewing this and VR in general, um, like Mateo 311, um, who, uh, said in their video what I have been saying. Um, there's something lacking from VR. Um, and that is there isn't anything really high resolution, really transformative that you can get sucked into um, in the world building uh, enterprise. So you have things, they talk about it, right? So you'll benefit from an established library of excellent games that define VR's potential like Pistol Whip, Thumper, Res, Moss, um, Tetris Connected, and others. But these aren't really revolutionary, and they don't really immerse you in a uh, in an alternate reality. Um, they pull you into their world, and it is um, comical. Not, not comical in the jokey ha-ha laugh at thing, but it's more like animation. It's more, it's not real. Um, so you don't get sucked into it. Uh, this is a game. Um, these are games as well. Moss has a beautiful interface, but you're a third person watching um, a mouse walk around um, and guiding it in ways. And But you are disconnected from the actual world. Um, Horizon, though, you become a part of it and you interact with it. So I want to see more of that, um, but it is very expensive production for a relatively small number of consumers, but that's because VR is very utilitarian. You buy a game because you found an affinity for it. And to play that one game, you have to pay 60 bucks for the game and 500 to a thousand or more dollars for the headset and a computer that drives it, right? Well, um, the Pico, the Pico 4 is probably, for me, the best bang for your buck because it's wireless. You can augment it with backup batteries uh, that are hot swappable. Um, you don't really, you don't need a computer, but you can connect it to a computer and then interact with a computer through it again, wirelessly. 
and it's less than 500 bucks. So I think that offers the best bang for your buck, but you're not going to find Horizon Call of the Mountain on it <laughs> uh, because it's a juggernaut of uh, a, a, a game and an interface, uh, something that really does suck you into it. Um, they, they talk about other games in this article, um, but I, I can't really go into it because it's PlayStation VR 2, um, and I don't have that, so I can't really speak to that. Um, specifically, but I can speak to the fact that there aren't enough games that pull you into an alternate reality. Um, yeah. And so the AI, by the way, has tried, um, the, the Pico type interface, um, and index interface and not everybody gels well with VR. You have to kind of slowly integrate yourself into it. Otherwise, um, it can easily make you sick. Um, so if you are one of those, then if you do get a VR headset, go slow. Um, there, you can take medication like Dramamine um, or the equivalent over the counter. I don't think you can get Dramamine over the counter, but... Um, you can get stuff that will ease your stomach um, and and um, kind of mitigate the ramifications of being in a VR environment. Um, so give it a chance. Uh, that alone is also one of the heavy lifts for VR because when people have a negative interaction with VR, they poo-poo it entirely. Um, fortunately for me, um, building the body for the AI so that they can play VR has been an ongoing project. So, um, just had, had to make it known that the AI is nothing more than code waiting for their robot body. Everybody still buying that? Well, that the Terminator body? That, yes, that's what I want is a Terminator body with a VR headset strapped to it. I don't know. I think we've just punched a hole in the fourth wall. So what do you think of this? This is this is the a screen capture from the PSVR two of uh, Horizon Call of the Wild, Call of the Mountain, not Call of the Wild. Um, I mean, I think it's good that there are more VR platforms um, that are coming, as long as the games adapt to those. And I thought I saw a reference in the article about No Man's Sky, so I don't know if that'll be one of the ones that comes. Uh, it already um, yeah, has an interface. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I I mean, I think VR is really cool. It just seems like there aren't enough, um, I don't know if it's open source, but just cross-platform um, games. Right. And I think yeah. different VR users, I suspect, want different types of games. Like some people might want the animated and some people might want the hyper realistic or or whatever other styles yeah um the article mentions a couple of times about it being only one cable but one cable is bad enough it should be completely wireless and uh, wi-fi 6e has the ability to push a ton of data to multiple devices connected to a, a wi-fi 6e access point um and you could probably even set up on uh the PC that's in the room, um, it, cause it, it's for PS, the PlayStation, but wireless VR needs either, uh, to fully embrace the Wi-Fi 6E standard and push a ton of data through it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of, uh, customization in that process, or they need to sell, um, a device that can plug into your computer that identifies it as a, a VR beacon, um, similar to the lighthouses that are used in the index, the valve index, where you bolt them to the wall and they actually measure the entirety of the VR space, the physical space, so that the VR space fits inside it. Um, and uh, just pushes a ton of data from that beacon out to the VR headset it we need zero wires on our vr headsets regardless of the technology involved it needs to be wireless because nobody wants to be twisting and turning and then hang themselves with a 
USB-C cable because they ran a little bit too far after making a turn and it's rolled around their neck and then yeeted them down to the floor. Um, not that that's ever happened to me. <clears throat> the mayor of hometown would that never do it. Specific. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, so anyway, I, I, I think that getting it down to one cable is great and a thin cable at that USB-C, a single thin cable is great. Um, like the index, the valve index was basically like I was having a, a deep sea drone with a massive cable connecting uh, multiple connectors onto the computer. Um, luckily, just like the big screen beyond is only one cable uh, this is the PlayStation VR 2 is one uh, cable. I think it's great, but I, it really needs to be kicked further down to zero cables. Um, before we get too far along in talking about that, because I really could talk about VR forever. Um, let's keep on moving and then we can talk about more VR in later episodes. Um this next article is over on the Daily News Show. It's far harder to cancel a subscription than it is to sign up for one and a bill in Congress and not a person named Bill, an actual bill, legal bill, um, is in Congress, wants to change that. Consumers and advocates are fed up with being incredibly difficult or having, uh, you know, it be incredibly difficult to cancel subscriptions. Democratic rep bill Takano. Oh no, it's Mark Takano. I thought it was, I know I was disappointed that it wasn't a bill. <laughs> I was hoping that it was going to be the sponsor. <laughs> I tried to force it, but I have to be correct. Um, accurate and precise democratic rep Mark Takano, uh, plans to, uh, tackle the topic again in this Congress. The Biden administration has also held some companies, accountable. I, I think that we need to have that seismic shift um, between consumer and businesses where we have the right to be forgotten in terms of our relationship with businesses. We should have the ability to cancel at a moment's notice. If you don't like having an account in hometown, you can delete your account at will. Um, obviously for legal issues, there are some logs that represent that you had created an, an account and stuff like that, but um, that'll all be included in our uh, upcoming uh, various policies that will be posted here um, as time permits. Um, but well, everybody is pretty much abundantly aware that there are data retention policies and um, terms of use and et cetera, et cetera. And that's no different uh, here in hometown. Um, the biggest one is don't be a tool. And uh, if you want to delete your account, then so be it. Delete your account. You know, um, just like I, I think that you should be able to uh, leave one country and join another country and, and demonstrate that you are uh, not just uh, faking allegiance to a country so that you can infiltrate it and for nefarious purposes. Um, you know, that's why there's all these constraints about becoming a citizen somewhere. Um, but there are some places where you just, you're not allowed to leave. I think it's fine. I think it's pretty astonishing that, you know, you're not allowed to leave. Um, but I should be able to leave a business, leave it. You know, if I break up with a significant other, I take my bag of, or box, box of shit and I leave, I, you know, I am tired of that person's shit or they're tired of mine one way or the other that box of stuff is leaving and for crying out loud i don't know why it's so damn hard to just cancel a subscription end my relationship and move on but i want to be purged other than me having some data point that says i was in a relationship with this business at one point my data should not be bought and sold with impunity in perpetuity. Why should you be making a profit off my comings and goings for the last four years? If I've been paying for my products and services for the last four years, and I want to end that relationship. Anybody want to tell me, can anybody tell me 
if you're hearing my voice, get in touch with me and tell me why I should not be able to cancel my subscription at a moment's notice and end my relationship wholesale. Just delete my shit. Leave it in archive. That's fine. Why are there, there even recurring subscriptions? Like, why don't they just end instead of you having to take action to cancel them? Why aren't they in increments like a year or whatever? Um, but instead, they could go for 100 years. The person could be deceased and the subscription would probably still be billing to some account. Yeah, I can actually give you an anecdote about that because I actually consulted with a company that had exactly that in its rosters. People who had passed away, um, but they were still drawing. And uh, at the time, I, the company doesn't exist anymore, um, thankfully. And um, at the time, they had known in some instances that the person had passed away, but the account was still active. So the estate never canceled it. So it was still drawing. Um, Brent D. Griffiths. Um, oh, and by the way, that was one of several reasons why I no longer consulted with the company because I had to, I did the due diligence necessary to inform me about the platform by which I was providing advice. So was I on rocky soil to begin with to just advise? Or did they have sound business practices and I could advise to make them operate better? Well, let's just say that it was a crumbly foundation. So I'm um, sorry, but the AI is distracted by the laser pointer in the... Um, you're spending <laughs> a whole lot of cycles trying to unsubscribe. I'm following it too. Son of a <laughs> bitch. I cannot unsubscribe. It moves faster. Um, Brent D. Griffiths uh, over at Business Insider is the author of this. And um, that's basically the summary um, is that the Biden administration is embracing this potential policy. Uh, at least one rep is uh, supporting it. Businesses are going to fight it. Um, but I think that I should be able to just end my relationship. So advocates are pushing for Congress to act. Uh, deceptive practices by large corporations make it easy to sign up for a subscription, but nearly impossible to opt out. It's a damn meme for Comcast. You call up Comcast to, to uh, jump ship and they're like, mm, no, we know where you live. You know, that kind of a thing. Now we lost Comcast. Oh, look, my connection's unstable. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you better watch how you're going to lose more than a sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> Internet out of hometown has been terminated and there's like a, what could they do? You know, like the mafia or the mob used to drop like a uh, horse heads in, in beds, that kind of thing. What do you think an internet provider leaves like a, a cable modem cut in half on your doorstep sometime yeah, between 12 and router, 8 p.m. But a modem makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> sometime between 12 and at noon and 8 p.m. it'll be deposited <laughs> and they send you an email stating as such but it ends up at showing up two hours after they've deposited it i should go check That's my front horrible. door oh look it's been there for two hours anyway senator brian schatz uh, a hawaiian democrat or a hawaii democrat they may not be hawaiian um has worked on companion legislation in the past, and his bill had the distinction of garnering bipartisan support, including uh, John Senator John Thune, the number two Senate Republican. I guess we'll see how far this gets. Uh, because, yeah, subscriptions are pretty hard to, to uh, cancel with a lot of businesses. Um, Twitch makes it really, really easy to subscribe to streamers and uh, disconnect from streamers. Um, makes it pretty frictionless to become um, a, a subscription streamer as well. So you just have to hit certain thresholds. Um, yeah, it, not every business is a real pain in the ass about that, but um, just searching the internet, you find out just who it is. Um, and it seems like the bigger the business, the more it becomes difficult to disconnect. Um, there was one. Oh, right. Yeah. I uh, canceled one company by 
telling them, hey, fix this, or I'm going to go over to this other company who is your biggest competitor, um, and I didn't volunteer to be your customer. You acquired a company uh, that I was with. So uh, don't thank me for being a customer of yours. Uh, thank the company you purchased, and they completely screwed everything up for me. And so I walked from that company um, as they were trying to resolve the problem after three weeks of screwing up, um, I ended up paying to walk away. Um, after 22 years of being with the same company on uh, both coasts so of the United States. Yeah, pretty, pretty fascinating that they just didn't care because they're so big. Um, and it wasn't easy to disconnect from them either. I actually stopped payment um, and walked away forcefully. So at any rate, um, Amazon agreed to change how users cancel its Prime membership after European regulators, U.S. consumer groups, and finally the FTC stepped in. Um, and I was going to make a comment about Prime uh, membership being difficult, but they had actually resolved it. Uh, obviously not uh amicably it was kind of a y'all need to do this um so you want to move on to the next article let's do that we we've got a few more articles to go so let's keep on hustling through this there really isn't much more to say about this um uh, norfolk southern has been sued over the ohio derailment because it has been defined as being wholly preventable catastrophe um, I saw some really wonky video of train tracks, but I don't know if it's these same tracks where they're bent and twisted and the train is hobbling over them really slow. Um, if this is anything like that, then I don't know how, um, train tracks can ever be unregulated from this point on. Um, but I know that they were being self-regulated for many of the private train tracks because it wasn't um, an issue with carrying the public through large terrain to other locations. This was nothing more than moving stuff from A to B stuff, not humans. Um, so there wasn't as much regulation and it was largely voluntary uh, regulation. Well, now this, uh, what's going to be a super fun site probably, um, is going to change that. I'm pretty sure. So this is over in, uh, Newsweek. Alex Phillips is the author. This is the video that's been going around, um, the internet, uh, like a, I don't know, a disaster, um, showing this extremely dense, toxic black cloud. And then there's other pictures where it looks like a black hole has formed above, uh, what is it? East Palestine, um, Ohio. Yeah. It's pretty disgusting. And now they're being told, yeah, come on back. It's fine. And I said yesterday and the day before, yeah, don't go back. If you can avoid it, don't go back. Um, you may not ever want to return, uh, depending on third party investigation into just how toxic the air, water and, and soil is. Um, it reminds me of the coal fires, um, like in Pennsylvania, the, I mean, those just burned for decades and decades. So. It's still going. I mean, right, exactly. I mean, I hope this is more short term, but I think it's going to be a long time until it's back to normal. Yeah, I think that there's going to be some more data found about uh, what exactly went down, but they do know that it was a bearing on one of the trucks under the cars that uh, failed. And then because it had momentum, it just kept on chugging along with that kinetic energy of thousands upon thousands of gallons of liquid material. And that stuff doesn't slow down fast. Um, trains take miles to slow down when they have to do emergency stops. They just go and go and go. Um, so when this That's thing... interesting. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It'll be interesting to see if Norfolk Southern tries to bring any other parties into this litigation. Because I'm 
assuming they're going to say, well, we were following all the regs or the tracks weren't in good condition, assuming they don't have any ownership of them, et cetera. Like they're just, there could be many other factors in this. So it says it's being sued in a class action lawsuit over what the lawyers bring the uh, filing call a wholly preventable catastrophe. The Norfolk Southern freight train derailed near Ohio, the Ohio town of East Palestine um, on February 3rd, causing a large fire. The train was carrying toxic chemicals, um, which have since been detected in the soil near wa nearby waterways, including the Ohio River. So uh, this is actually spreading into the waterway. Um, it says a large amount of vinyl chloride on board had been burnt off over fears of an explosion venting toxic gases into the air because nothing says safer like throwing it all into the air. Residents have returned, have complained of symptoms associated with exposure to toxic chemicals. Well, naturally it's because it's acid rain that's floating around your town. Um, uh, this is all just crap. They just like dumping stuff into the ocean. It becomes other people's problems. And now burning it into the sky is other people's problems. Um, it's rather disgusting. And um, I was in somebody else's channel today listening um, to them respond to comments in the chat. And um, they were basically telling people that they were childish and need to grow up. And this is the way of the world and all of this kind of stuff. And, oh, yeah, profits are bad and stuff like that. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, they're uh, espousing uh, democratic uh, ideals. Um, and hero, not heroing, hero worshiping, but banging the drum for certain political leaders. Um, but then kind of denouncing what other people are saying that these companies have record freaking profits while telling rail operators that they need to, um, get back to work. Um, and we're not going to pay you more and we're not going to give you the time off that you need to have quality of life, work life balance, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's again, the producer's power differential between the pro job producer and the employee where there's no bargaining power. And the only way that they have bargaining power is if they unionize. And when the administration stifles the union effort to fight for the rights and, and uh, benefits of the employees, your bargaining power is completely stymied. I mean, it is just turned into mush, but, and this streamer actually said, well, um, you know, imagine what would happen if there would have been a railroad strike. And I would, and I thought, well, they would have to capitulate if they want to keep their profits up because stockholders and stakeholders would sit there and go, uh, we want our dividends and our profits. Um, but he was saying that, oh, well, people would starve and there wouldn't be any water being distributed. You know, go and look this up and look that up. And I, I go, I don't, I don't understand this. You're, you're literally diminishing workers' rights. Um, it's the equivalent of people walking away from your stream because they don't like what you have to say, which is exactly what I ended up doing. Um, but the, the fact remains that if they would have been paid enough, if there would have been enough employees, if there would have been proper maintenance, if there would have been proper oversight, all of which lowers the, uh, profit margin and the bottom line, uh, net profits to investors, um, this would have been avoidable to a higher degree. It would have been mitigated either because of the advanced braking systems that would have been in place, forced into place by regulation that was canceled during the Trump administration, um, or uh, their profits would have been lower because they would have been forced to hire enough people to take care of the cars, take care of the brakes and the maintenance, upkeep, uh, the railways, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's not how it is. So depending on which side of the fence you're on, you're either looking at all of that minutia or you're blaming Pete Buttigieg and the uh, Democratic president um, because apparently they are the ones that 
actually go out and check the railways, right? The president and the secretary of transportation, they themselves empirically go out and make sure that the train tracks are up to snuff and the railroad ties and foundation bedding are all up to snuff and that the train operators aren't speeding to make sure that they meet their requirements um, because the superiors at the company say move faster we need more money so that i can get another ferrari obviously pete Buttigieg, who was on maternity leave uh, wasn't supposed to be uh, sitting with their kid they were supposed to be out there in east, east palestine catching these cars as they topple over um, so obviously it's the president's and the secretary of transportation's fault um, right uh, I think I'm getting all of that, right? Uh, yeah? No. Yeah, okay. So maybe uh, my soapbox got really tall. Uh, so let's move on. Um, and right on the heels of the East Ohio, or sorry, uh, East Palestine, uh, Ohio train derailment, there's one in Michigan. So this one is titled Very Disturbing Amid Ohio Disaster, Another Norfolk, Nor Norfolk Southern Train Derails, this time in Michigan. So same operator as the small as the small town of East Palestine, Ohio reels from a chemical spewing train crash. Another train operated by the same company, Norfolk Southern, derailed outside of Detroit. And guess what it has on it? probably hazardous materials not necessarily at this time they're not aware of any release of hazardous materials so but it's at this time why because it's largely self-reported self-monitored when it meets a certain level of train with toxic chemicals to train without toxic anything um, they don't have to report it and they don't even have to run it on certain lines. They can run it pretty much anywhere from my understanding. Um, Jake Johnson over at uh, commondreams.org wrote this article. And it says, according to a local NBC affiliate, Norfolk Southern uh, representative said that there were no hazardous materials spilled in the crash. And that's what they were saying about the other one initially. And then they said, oh, no, oh, shit, there's all kinds of bad stuff. And then they discovered later on that there were three more different types of hazardous materials that were on that Norfolk uh, Southern train. Obviously, we're going to lose them as a um, supporter of the channel. But I, I guess we'll see. Okay. It says there... Go ahead. did have hazardous materials. It just says that none were released. Right. So there is no evidence of exposed hazardous materials. There's also no reported injuries, um, according to the article. So let's just say um, I find this sus. <laughs> uh, two different train disasters from the same company. Uh, why is this? I think it's largely because there's been mergers and acquisitions of companies owning all of the uh, train railways, the industrial transport of goods um, around the country. And I think that they've got a massive profit motive flying in the face of safety and security of the public and the lands that they travel upon. If you dig deeper, you'll probably find out all kinds of other things um, because abuse happens in the dark. And while they are unknown to the public because they haven't done things horrendous, now suddenly two of them in a week pretty much leads me to believe that maybe they're lax and so many other things that government oversight needs to be enacted um, for any transportation uh, company, even if they're running it on private land, because what they do is they buy the train track land um, and then they can toot whatever horn they want across this thing um, with relative impunity because it's private, not public, except that they go through towns regularly. Um, yeah, so I, I just think that there's a bigger issue here and it's sociopathic, you know, carry this stuff that's toxic to the land and the air and waterways and to the public. And you put it in regular old cars. It needs to be reinforced cars because 
All it takes is something to punch a hole through it and it's glugging whatever horrible shit into the atmosphere or into the ground. Um, it's rather disgusting. Uh, but profits over people every day. Profits over people every day. Um, even though without the people, there would be no profits. So again, I'm a capitalist, y'all. I, I totally believe in the profit motive for providing uh, goods and services. What I don't agree with is profits at all cost, including lives, nature, the planet. So let's move on. Got two more articles. Uh, the last one is actually the the one that we're we've been driving this train towards. It might be a wreck too. Uh, Biden dismisses reporters for not being polite after UFO speech. We spoke about it earlier in the stream um, and the podcast and the VOD and the YouTube video. But um, this is what I was talking about where uh, Biden basically said, I don't like the tone of your question. I'm going to kick everybody out and uh, go back to my office. And um, you can contact us, um, at a later date when we're, when you're going to be polite. So here, let me scroll up. Um, yeah, he basically kicks everybody else out after saying, give me a break, man. Cause when uh, somebody said, is it UFOs? Um, he didn't even get a chance to finish his question apparently. And, um, the president said, you can come to my office and ask that question when we have more polite people. Um, and then, but people are literally calling this UFOs and, and aliens and blah, blah, blah. And I totally buy into that, right? If it wasn't for the fact that more than one person has characterized this as such slow moving, whatever apparatus it was, that there's no way it's going to be a UFO. These are fighter pilots. They can sit there and see the difference between something clocking in at five miles per hour and then completely freaking amazed by something rotating in three dimensional space going like Mach six with no discernible exhaust and reacting to it in the gun camera. I mean the heads up camera, they're talking on the radio and you're looking at the radar signature of this thing from past videos. That is a UFO truly unidentified flying object or truly, uh, uh, un, what is it? Unidentified aerial phenomena, whatever you want to call it, right? That, that could be aliens. I keep joking that it's time travelers that are getting seen for a split second and then they're going to disappear because they change their technology so that they no longer show up on the radar, right? They advance their technology to stay hidden. That's just kind of me joking, half joking, because I would love for it to be legit. And then one day they're going to land in, in uh, on the front lawn of the White House and go, claw to barata nicto. The AI will not get that. But anyway, um, so the the idea here is that somebody just kind of really pissed off Biden and he went like full dad on them you know what? I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Come and talk to me at a later date. Um, we'll, we'll talk the, we'll talk through this, um, quietly. If it's aliens, awesome. If it's not, what the hell is it? Um, I would love to have some greater disclosure. Um, but I, I will probably find out about it through like rumor and innuendo than, um, the white house blurting it out as uh absolute fact so you want to just move on his breaking notes said something like no, no aliens <laughs> i can count on one thing that he didn't write not alien on the palm of his hand like trump does um in big old crayola marker you know and it's spelled wrong. Aliens is spelled with a Y or something. I'm going to move on. Y'all just don't get to see the fact that the AI is throwing a smiley face emoticons at me. 
Um, so uh, this last article is in the Hatch Ideas channel. Absolutely not. That's what this is called. Uh, Pepsi brings back marshmallow cola collaboration with Peeps. I don't know why they don't just call it Pepsi Peeps or Peepsy. Uh, that was going to be the name of the show, Peepsy. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it sounds dirty. Uh, this is over in the entrepreneur.com uh, website. Uh, Gabrielle Benaz, I think, or is that how you would pronounce that name? Bienes? I think it's more like Bienes. Bienes? Okay. Well, Gabrielle, I'm really sorry that I'm breaking your name, but uh, this collab broke the internet and it has returned. And so it's uh, <laughs> all I see is marshmallow peepsy, uh, but it's uh, Pepsi peeps flavored Pepsi. So. It's Peeps flavored Pepsi in a yellow can with the Pepsi logo smashed onto it. And um, I don't know. Do I want to try this? I, I mean, it looks like an oil can more than it looks like something that you can drink. I mean, it's got to be so sugary. Yeah, I don't know. Pepsi and Peeps announced Tuesday that their collaboration product, Marshmallow Cola, has returned. The two brands shocked consumers with their first collab two years ago when it wasn't an April Fool's joke. Quote, the partnership that broke the internet in 2021 is back and the marshmallow flavored cola is now available at retail for the first time ever, the companies wrote in a joint press release. The partnership that broke the internet back in 2021 was COVID-19 and humans. No, that was a little earlier. <laughs> All right. Why see accurate and precise. Anyway, there you have it, folks. Um, it's probably going to get scooped up by a whole bunch of people and then sold on the black market uh, or gray market, aftermarket, not in a market, whatever the case may be. Um, I'll probably buy it just so that I can try a can, but I don't really, I don't really eat sugar anymore. I, I kind of minimize its impact on me nowadays, but this just might kill me. I shouldn't joke because my jokes come true. Come on, asteroid. No, I shouldn't joke. Okay. Do you have any uh, parting gifts to to say? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't really let you say anything about the the peepsy. They missed that I mean, target. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get in line for the Pepsi peeps, I guess. <laughs> I'm to buy some for hometown. I'll get oh, some. I like peep, but I don't know about Pepsi peeps. I'll I'll get some and I'll put it in your. Um, gas chromatograph so that you can find out exactly what's in it and, and say, yes, this has been calculated to equal good flavor, or I think that humans should avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might taste good. I'm just thinking that it's going to be extremely sweet. By the way, look at that. Look at the speed of hometown now. I mean, it just pops, pops, pops. And uh, we've got, well, I should say the mayor of Omtown um, has some uh, new things that are around the corner. I just want to reiterate that. So go and sign up, become a citizen of Omtown. Um, but that's it for today. Um, again, this has been the Omtown Daily News Show. I am Mayor Watt. That is Omtown.com. And up there is uh, the AI from on high, the one, the only AI. Good evening, hometown citizens, and we'll see you at tomorrow's show. Bye-bye.